You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? Hello, hello. Welcome to another incredible episode of Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart to Radio. And I'm your host, Denny. We have a very special guest for you guys, so you definitely want to stick around for that. And as a matter of fact, text your buddies, family members, or even share it on social media right now and let them know that we are about to dive deep into another interview. Before we bring our guest on, I do want to say that you have to go for it. You know, what would really get you going today? What would make you so excited, you know, so motivated, so full of energy that you literally could not stop until you had it done? Everyone is motivated by something. What is it that gets you going? What is it that would, you know, compel you to transcend any obstacle to do whatever is necessary to pursue it? Do you know what it would be? If not, then, well, it's worth your effort to find out. You got to dig into your desires, get in touch with your purposes and passions, discover the things that are truly important to you when you do know what that is by all means go for it you'll find your greatest success pursuing those things for which you have the greatest passion so look at any successful person and you'll see a driving passion constantly pushing that person forward you simply cannot be successful you must be successful at certain things in particular your success must have an objective or it cannot ever happen find an objective that you can get passionate about and put the whole of yourself into making it happen. Take that from me, Coach Dini. That is my word, and word is fun. Have you struggled budgeting your finances? Don't worry, you're not alone. HumbledBudget.com, that's H-U-M-B-L-E-D-B-U-D-G-E-T.com is the help and resource you've been searching for. HumbledBudget.com is a personal finance and educational website with a great variety of topics when it comes to budgeting, taxes, investing, and the popular topic of FIRE, financial independence, retire early. HumbledBudget.com has a goal, and that's to help you reach your financial dreams no matter what your goals are when it comes to finances it doesn't matter where you start where you come from or where you are right now humbledbudget.com can help what are you waiting for take that first step to the financial life you've dreamed of and go to humbledbudget.com that's h-u-m-b-l-e-d-b-u-d-g-e-t humbledbudget.com all right, all right. Again, welcome to the show. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I'm your host, Dini. Our interviews are designed to go beyond music, news, books, art, acting, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and into the minds of these incredible human beings, you know, the ones who are out there giving it their all for me, for you, and for the world. I want to welcome you guys to our interview with the multi-talented Terry Sizemore, DVM. With a diverse background that includes being a veterinarian, author, and publicist, Terry has had an exciting and rewarding career journey. And today, we dive into her experiences as a veterinarian, her passion for storytelling, and the importance of sharing our stories. Terry, 
Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It sounds really like a great show. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. How was your day today? Very good. Very busy, but very good. All right. Glad to hear it. So before we get into uh, the why and the how, let's discuss the who. Give us a brief look into your beginnings. Well, I was raised um, in a little suburb of Cleveland, Ohio, and just a, you know, a small life, small childhood, but I wanted to, to pursue medicine. I'm not exactly sure where that um, desire came from in my heart. I guess I love the biological sciences. I did very well with them, love learning about life and the bo- human body and things like that. And so I graduated from high school when I was 16 years old. And then I started school. I worked as a nursery school teacher, and I loved child, uh, you know, young child education, as well as um, was pursuing my my biology degree. And I met an ambulance driver, and that kind of took my path a little on a segue to be an ambulance driver for the city of Cleveland. And then I didn't know about my all my career choices but I chose to be a nurse a registered nurse as well so while I was driving the ambulance I was in nursing school and then I used my nursing education to work through veterinary school I had changed my career path from being a human doctor to being a veterinarian when one of my horses was injured and I had to make a trip to the university veterinary hospital and I thought that would kind of combine everything in my life my animals my medicine my love of education because it allowed me to be a teacher as well in college in the sciences and in case I held an educator's license in Ohio for over five years um, so taught K through 12 and then I moved to Florida when family members were were ill and I ended up staying. I thought I'd only be in Florida for five or six months and I've been here. This is my 10th year. And in this time, I decided that I wanted to, I've always been interested in writing. I love writing children's literature, um, children's books, my faith-based books for my Christian faith. And I wrote three veterinary books to start a series of animal care, just basic um, animal care information for families or pet owners. And one is D is for dog, one is C is for cat, and one is H is for horse. And they cover some mundane topics of why we vaccinate and things like that. But I think that the information is very helpful to all of the um, average pet owners. It's written in a way that's very easy to understand and covers the topics, can be a great reference, can be something that young children can um, enjoy while they're taking care of pets in their home. And maybe they have a desire to go into medicine as well. So it's been a fun life, busy life. I've had a career in nursing for many years in all of the different types of uh, fields, emergency room, ICUs, cardiac care units, post-op, open hearts, all the ortho, surgical floors, everything, and some veterinary medicine, some large animal, and now I mostly am in, in small animal work, emergency and regular pet care. So it's a pretty busy life, but yeah. it's a great life. Wow, and impressive. Wow. Well, thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, how many, or I won't ask you that, what kind of pets or animals have you owned and taken care of during your life? Mostly dogs and cats. I've had um, ducks and chickens and rabbits and guinea pigs and goats. I'd love to have sheep. And at one time I had 17 horses. I ride dressage and jumping horses, and I raced harness horses for 10 years and really, really enjoyed that. And so I have a background um, that helped me in veterinary medicine as well because it really helps when you actually own the animals and you know a lot about the care and to help people own and take care of their animals too as they're learning some 
some are new pet owners as well. Absolutely. Wow. All right. And you mentioned that you do write books based on Christianity and faith. Yes. Yeah. That, yes. That's incredible. I have. Yes, I have been a Christian for 50 years. I can't believe it's been 50 wonderful years of of knowing God and um, just knowing better and better all the time. It's it's always a growing thing and. So he inspired me um, to write uh, some blogs, you know, and some of the things that he had shown me in his word and in my private time. And so I did that, and then I put them all in books. They're little lighting candles books. Um, My sister-in-law one time made the comment, we curse the darkness, but goodness forbid anyone should light a candle, you know, and so... We know that um, God wants us to know Him and, and have knowledge. And, and the more we see Him in His Word and in His children and teachings, I think the more we know Him and the closer we can walk with Him. And it's, it's important, I think. You know, I have several devotionals that I go to every day and kind of keep my spirit fed. And so I wrote some books for that and um, the 23rd Psalm. Um, so it's it's been really fun. I I really enjoy sharing my faith with other people. Yeah, same same here. I'm a Christian too, and it mm-hmm. seems like every chance I get nowadays, is, you know, is something faith built uh, or, or faith based. And uh, my friends are like, are you becoming a preacher? I said, I don't know. I may. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, know. you know, he tells us to take the word. You know, my yeah. people perish for lack of knowledge. So we're the ones that help give them the knowledge, you Absolutely. know, that God has shared with us. Absolutely. So, Terry, uh, your career path has been truly fascinating. Um, as you mentioned, starting first in uh, teaching in nursery school to becoming a veterinarian. Um, how have these different roles influenced your perspective and approach as a professional? Well, you know, that's a really good question because... To be honest with you, it you know when I sometimes when you look back, it's a little easier to see how God does direct our steps. But I have some learning disabilities that I wasn't aware of, and no one really identified as I was growing up. I was a pretty shy child, and so I was very quiet. And that they may not have even noticed that I was dyslexic and I had an attention deficit, and so. Those things, it made it very difficult for me to learn. However, the way that God had tailored it was really unique and really marvelous for me because while I was going through nursing school, the things that I was learning in my books, I was doing on the ambulance. I was taking care of heart patients, stroke patients, trauma patients. You know, so I was seeing medicine and doing medicine on a basic level um, for basic life support, and I was seeing it in the hospital, too. I had the, the really great privilege of learning at Cleveland Metropolitan General Hospital. So it was a county hospital in Cleveland that saw a wide range of patients and burn patients and a lot of trauma patients. So we got a great education seeing and we spent a great deal of time with our patients and so my love for medicine was just it's been my whole life and then when I went to veterinary school I had all of that medical background and all of that so when I went there and I had my learning disabilities being not able to read very well I already knew most of the information, so God had helped me make it a stepping stone so that when I got to vet school, I wasn't overwhelmed. And and it, only, it not only, um, you know, I worked at the Cleveland Clinic, I worked at University Hospitals of Cleveland, I worked at every single hospital almost in the Cle- greater Cleveland area as a nurse. And when I came to Florida, I worked at a trauma center in, in Daytona Beach and as well as some other facilities. So medicine in general, just being exposed to human medicine, oh, it made me a better veterinarian too. 
and it made me understand disease, the disease process, even in the animals, because it's far more sophisticated in humans, but they're very sophisticated in animals with the special, the specialists are, but I'm a general practitioner, but I just feel like I have a very, very good background, and God had designed that for me, and it wasn't until several years ago that I had discovered that Mozart music is very helpful to dyslexic brains and really? it was a miracle yes they say the m music is from heaven and i believe that i believe mozart had a tragic life but his music is divine and there were a couple of pieces the violin concertos and the sonata for two pianos i had read several books one was by dr daniel amen change your brain change your life uh, I read Super Learning, and I read The Mozart Effect by Don Campbell, and all of the books across the board said that those pieces of Mozart had the most profound effect to straighten out my miswirings in my brain, and it did. I was able to do better writing, more creative writing, um, and read better, and that was a really big deal for me because I... My siblings and other people that I know can read so well, and they read their Bibles well, and they read a lot of different books, and they can learn very nicely that way. And that was very difficult for me. Even reading my Bible was very difficult. It has been just a divine relationship between me and God, how He points out, how He brings the truth of His Word to me, because I could read chapter after or verse after verse, chapter after chapter, and never remember one thing I read. It was kind of sad, but um, the Mozart music improved that, and God being faithful to help me and guide me and point me to material that would help me see His Word even more clearly than I was seeing it on my own. So it was fun. I probably got off on a tangent on your question, yeah. didn't I? No, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful answer. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah. And I, I jotted down two of the books that you mentioned, The Mozart Effect and Change Your Brain, Change Your Life. I, I think I want to check those out. Yes, he's very detailed. And since I know neuroanatomy, Dr. Daniel Amen is faith-based, and he is wonderful. I went through an unfortunate, but I guess this was fortunate because I had come to know God in such a real way, I went through a, a very tragic five-year period of suicidal depression between 1983 and 1988. But God walked me out of that, and He did change my brain, and He, he did help me, and He did help me to forgive the, the persons that I was holding a grudge against, and He healed me, and I... I can honestly tell you that every day is a gift to everyone, but it is a particular gift to me because I know how seriously hurting I was during that very, very low time in my life. But Dr. Amen is faith-based, and he does help people who struggle with any of those things um, to have a better life because... You know, depression is very difficult to, to deal with sometimes. It's very real, and it's very, um, it has a stigma that, you know, people don't understand, you know, if they don't have any experience with it. So it was a very difficult time in my life, but there were, you know, God brought me the information. He was faithful to bring me that information to help. Whatever we need help with, God has information to help us with those things, you know? Absolutely. So, storytelling um, seems to be a recurring theme in your career. And now yes. you are inviting others to share their stories as, as well. Why do you believe in the power of storytelling? And um, how, how does it connect people on a deeper level? Well, you know, technically Jesus was a storyteller as well. You know, he told the story of the Good Samaritan, and he told the story of the prodigal son. And sometimes our brains relate. When we can relate to things, 
it kind of makes them more real to us, you know, and people have been telling stories for literally thousands and thousands of years. And so it's, sometimes it feels like the same old story over and over again. I wrote a little story about a little kitten who lost her little red mittens that she dearly loved, those mittens, and they blew off Mama's clothesline during a, a windstorm one day. And she looked and looked and looked for him, couldn't find him. She finally found him on the paws of a little tiger kitten. And she had an idea and went home and gathered all of her mittens in a big basket and then passed them out to all the children and all the other kittens in the neighborhood. And so in the middle of sadness and loss, this little kitten learned the valuable lessons of giving and sharing. So it's a story that kind of helps the children do that. And I paired that with a craft where they could buy two mittens and they could keep one and give one away or two little slippers and keep one and give one away to a child who needed one or would enjoy one as well. So the stories are, you know, they're just, they're immor- you know, they're just the stories we've always been telling, but sometimes it's nice to hear them a new, fresh way. And so I, I love the creative process. I, I work with artists all over the world in Belarus, South Africa, Brazil, Ukraine. One of my artists is a wonderful artist. She's a refugee to Poland from Ukraine. The other is in the war zones of Ukraine. I hear from her occasionally. I have them in Russia. So I'm connected to these wonderfully talented people all over the world who bring the stories to life. And I have authors that are from England and South Africa, Brazil, America, um, Italy, and other countries. So it's been fun to be able to, you know, just offer to partner with people to tell their story. You know, if they want something, you know, some direction as to how to get their story out there, I'm happy to help. If they need cover work, if they need some art, I just... um, signed on a wonderful lady. I did a podcast with her. She has a podcast to moms of young children, and she wrote a story, and she wanted to partner with me to have that story in print, and we teamed up with a great artist, and so we're doing that project. So we could do that with any of your listeners if they're interested in that, and if they have a story to tell, I'm happy to hear those stories. Nice. That's a part of your publicist work, correct? Yes. Okay. Tell us more about that, your your company, your publishing company. It's A to Z Press, and I have over 150 titles. A hundred wow. of those plus are children's picture books, which are my favorite. They're near and dear to my heart. I remember um, when I my stepdaughter was young, and she just loved those picture books. So I, we would go to the library, and I was allowed to get 35 books out at a time, and I did. I went through the picture book section and took them all home, and we would sit up and read all, you know, and she thought she was tricking me into staying up late, and I was tricking her into reading. And so she loved those books, and she became a great reader. And then we advanced to chapter books, and then she went on to doing her own um, particular books that she enjoys reading but they just they were cute and fun clever colorful children's books are just everything wonderful to me you know that they're just timeless and so and, and I really have several um, novels I have a novel about um, two girls who were raised in an orphanage and find out that they're related in the end and find their mother who did not abandon them unintentionally. And it's a great little novel. It's like a thriller. And I have a sci-fi novel, 2059, and I have a post-Civil War um, novel and another novel that's a retelling of the um, flood, Noah and the Flood. And... Um, what other novels? Oh, I have a great novel called The the Strange Case of William Whippersnapper, 
and he is a charming young man who is mischievous. He's very intelligent, but he's not using his intelligence correctly. And he finds a small silver case in the tree roots in his backyard, and the, this little case grants wishes. But when the wishes are granted, they go, they're not granted the way that you would want them to be granted. For instance, young William wanted to have a year's worth of firewood so he didn't have to go out and chop it every day. Well, then it chopped down all of his father's cherry trees. <laughs> so all of the wishes go wrong. And, and what the case says was, well, when you wish, you didn't realize when your wish was coming true what the consequences of that wish would be. And so I think that that story really tells us a lot about how sometimes we wish for things and we don't realize that that might not be the best for us. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So it was a great little story. And then I have another book called... Um, the magic tape where a very shy boy named young Tristan is um, he's saving the world it's the world of good and bad it's music versus noise and all of the metaphors are musical and Tristan has to save the world and he becomes friends with a with a character in the book whose hair changes and it's just darling the way he learns how the true meaning of friendship as well as the you know the age-old good will win over evil and Tristan has to save the world but we have a, kind of a varied collection of fun books and like I said we're always looking for ways to add more books to our collection all right all right and where can our listeners connect with you online my um my email address is Sizemore, S-I-Z-E-M-O-R-E, 3630 at AOL.com. And the books, the website that I have the books at, and I have a card business as well as the jewelry and other gift business with the books, is bestlittleonlinebookstore.com. And... Um, I also forgot to mention that I have this really amazing book. Um, Dr. Praise Matamavi approached me, and she is a transplant surgeon in Mississippi, and she collected 75 stories of black women who became surgeons. And it, they, the stories are amazing. Um, they're from 28 countries around the world. The girls are neurosurgeons, uro urologists, cancer surgeons, um, general um, soft tissue uh, transplant surgeons. They have accomplished so much and, and all of their struggles. And, and even if someone doesn't have a desire to be a surgeon, um, it just what the book shows is that if you can dream it, you can do it. And I think it would give any reader the vision to see that their life can be successful and that their dreams can be realized. So it's a great read. And um, Dr. Praise from Matamavi did a nice job um, collecting the stories and we edited that, edited that together. That is nice. I have to check that out. I'm from Mississippi. Uh, born oh, and yeah. raised. And, yeah. And I currently moved, I moved back uh, like 10 years ago. So uh, well, a little bit more than 10 years ago. Uh, I thought you were in North Dakota. No, no. I'm in Mississippi, and uh, our studios are in California. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, that's fun. You sound like you have a very fun life as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Terry. But your listeners know all about you. Oh, yeah. I, I get to squeeze in bits and pieces of my life here and there. Uh, yes. Yeah, but Terry, it was very nice uh, to have you here with us this evening, discussing your uh, fan fascinating career, and and also what you are doing for up and coming uh, authors um, with your company. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for having me and taking time. It sure was a pleasure. Absolutely. All right. Have a great evening. Take care. You too. Bye bye. God bless. 
thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio Live. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, Spotify, Castbox, iHeart Radio, iTunes, YouTube, the app Podcast Addict, or over at our website which again is onlyonemediagroup.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you like to request music or send something for me to play email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com that is v as in victor and here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone and actually scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right that's the bottom line this is my show so deal with it (laughs) just kidding on behalf of myself denny i appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us spread the word because sharing is caring we stuffed up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show be sure to connect with me on facebook twitter instagram tumblr snapchat tiktok and all social media sites as well as spreaker youtube we always follow back okay well just remember to put yourself into everything that you do and never stop investing in yourself peace love grilled cheese and talk with you later You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive.